everyone, and welcome to episode six of the Nitty Heather podcast. My name is Heather, and I'm coming to you from Kent, Washington, where I live with my husband and our Cavalier King Charles Spaniel Pepper. This is my podcast where I talk about all my knitting projects and everything I learn and all my new experiences as I work through my projects. And so this is my opportunity just to share with you. If you'd like to connect with me, I am on Instagram at Nitty Heather. I would love to hear from you there and see what you are up to on the old Instagram. If you're a new viewer, thank you so much for finding me and taking the time to watch. If you're a returning viewer, thank you as well. I really appreciate you coming back and all of the support that this podcast has been getting. I really love kind of creating a community of makers, knitters, and crocheters. If you have any questions about anything I talk about on this podcast, please let me know. I will try to give as much detail about any of the patterns, yarns, accessories I use down in this description box below. Today is Monday, July 13th, and I have so many fun things to tell you about. I'm excited to get started. Today I am wearing my Diamond Cowl by Aspen Knits. It is a very pretty, lacy diamond pattern. It is one of my all-time favorite cowls. I love the size. I love how it drapes. It just, it fits so nicely and it's so comfortable. So this is definitely one of my all-time favorite cowls that I have ever knit. I made it out of Hazel Knits in her DK Lively in the colorway Atmosphere. And I almost have enough to do like a hat or maybe even another cowl. I haven't weighed this, but I have enough that I could maybe do a little something else. I really, really love this yarn. I think I got it in Seattle at a place called the Fiber Gallery in Green Lake, the Green Lake neighborhood, I want to say. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's where I got this. I, I did this quite a few years ago, but as I say, I wear it all the time. It is absolutely one of my very favorite cowls. So please do check it out on Ravelry, the Diamond Cowl by Aspen Knits. Today I am also wearing a pair of vanilla socks. This is made out of Regia Perfect in the colorway 7121 Lagoon. I did cuff down with the fish lips kiss heel. I worked on this project as we were driving to California on vacation last summer. So that's kind of a sweet memory tied to these socks. The cool thing about this Perfect yarn is it ends up giving you two matching balls of yarn. All you have to do is start winding and then you get to like a yellow section in the middle. Cut that little part off and then you can start winding the second ball and it will be exactly the same. Before I get started, I would like to take you to Heather from a few days ago where I will talk about my Year of Minis cowl from Clark and Dell. I didn't want to spoil anything from the new summer set, so I thought I'd record it a little bit ahead of time. Enjoy! Hey guys, I just wanted to jump in real quick before I got too far into the week and behind on this. I wanted to show how I'm coming on my Year of Minis cowl and kind of show it to you while I still had it nicely pinned on my little mannequin girl here. I didn't want to spoil this week's color, which is the first one from the summer set. So I just wanted to kind of show you. This is winter and spring mini sets from Clark and Elle. She did a set of 13, one for every week of the winter quarter, a set of 13, one for every week in the spring quarter, and then this past Sunday I was able to open the first one for the summer quarter and I, like I said, I don't want to spoil it, it's not in here yet, but it is beautiful. I cast on 90 stitches on a size 5, these are my Knitter's Pride Zings. And I just do six rounds of each of these colors. I'll maybe kind of show you. So I actually cast on right here with the provisional cast on. And I think I mentioned the first time I showed this, I really should have used, since this first color is very light, I should not have used a white color for the cast on, but that's okay. It's 
it's a different enough yarn I'll be able to pick up the stitches but it won't be as easy as if I had been smart and used a contrasting color so that was a little bit of a mistake but like I say I always want to share everything I learn with you and any mistakes I make so hopefully you can learn from them and don't make the same mistakes I do so the winter started down here and I believe this light green color was the first of the spring and then there's lots of pretty pinks and blues. I think this one is one of my favorites. It reminds me like of a cherry blossom. Loved that color. So anyway, I do six rounds of each color and then it will eventually, this is halfway, so it should fit around my neck. Perfectly is just kind of a cute little infinity loop or cowl. I'm excited definitely to look at and see what the next colors for the summer set will be. Hopefully she releases her fall set soon. I'll be sure and order that so I can have the whole complete year of minis. Comment down below if you have any questions about this and I'd be happy to share. I do have quite a bit left. This is what I have left of all of the spring minis and this is all I have left of the winter minis so I think I only used maybe like three grams or so in each stripe so I would love for your suggestion um, as far as what to do with extra minis these were 20 gram minis so you know I've got a good at least 15 I don't think I used any more than five I'm pretty sure I only used about three grams comment down below with any suggestions I'd love to almost do another like year-long project with these. Maybe the Habitation Throw by Helen Stewart, I'm not quite sure, but I'd love to maybe incorporate this year's worth of little minis in a different project. So comment down below if you have any suggestions, I would love to hear them. Just kind of so you know my game plan that I keep, I'm able to keep up with this project is I open the mini on Sunday and I usually wind it that day and then Monday through Saturday, I just do one round every day and that way I'm able to kind of keep up with it and it doesn't take too much time. I can spend some time on my other projects, but I really think this is turning out super fun and it'll just, you know, continue to grow. Hopefully we can see kind of a transition from summer colors and especially once fall hits, getting to more fall colors as well. So once again, year of minis little cowl of my own kind of design from the year of minis advents from clark and l check out their shop on etsy okay well i hope you enjoyed that little look into my year of minis cowl from clark and l back to our regularly scheduled programming first i would like to tell you a little bit about some very happy mail i received this is from lauren lolo did it downton abbey upstairs and downstairs collection. This is from May. I actually did just receive her June colorway, but I don't want to spoil that because I only got it a few days ago and I want to make sure that everybody gets it before I talk about it. But what it is is a sock set. You get one of her little Lolos and it's on her um, low original base, which is 85.15 and a full 100 gram. How pretty are all of these speckles? I think this will knit up so nicely. So many different colors in here. This colorway is called Lady Mary's Virtue. And so if you are a big Downton Abbey fan like I am, you know all about that. Such a pretty tonal mini for the toes, heels, and cuffs as well. I can't wait to put these together in a lovely sock. I'm not sure when I'll knit these up, but until I do, they will look very pretty in my stash. She has these, it's a monthly sock set club. I'm not sure if she's still selling anymore. It first came out in April, and this was the first first color, first set that came out in May. When I saw that she had this out, I really just had to jump on it. Not that I need any more sock yarn, but I love Downton Abbey and it did kind of inspire me to watch the whole series again, which was really fun. So check it out. She has a lot of beautiful sock sets in her shop anyway on her website. 
Lolo Did It, her Downton Abbey Upstairs and Downstairs Sock Club. <laughs> Next, I'd like to start telling you about my finished objects. I do have four pairs of socks I finished since last time. So here is the first one. These were my June Desert Vista Dye Works socks. This was in the colorway Zombodies, not in Kansas. I did the library socks from the kitchen sink shop. It's a very pretty kind of ribbed pattern. I love her little zombie stripes. I used a little light blue mini for the toes, heels, and cuffs. It's a traditional slip stitch heel. I'll kind of turn it back now that you've seen the pattern. So this was definitely a pattern I will do again. It was very simple and it fits nicely. I really think that this is just a good, another good go-to pattern if you are looking for something beyond a plain stockinette vanilla sock. I think it looked really nice in self-striping yarn. It would look nice in any other kind of sock yarn as well. I chose to use this colorway in the month of June because I am a big fan of The Wizard of Oz and Judy Garland and June was Judy Garland's birthday month so I thought that might be a good little special thing to do for June. Library socks using Desert Vista Dye Works in the colorway Zombodies not in Kansas. This is from her Wizard of Oz collection. She's got I think about like seven or eight colors in her Wizard of Oz collection, kind of one for for all the characters. So I definitely need to check that out and get a few more of those. Next is my Cozy Knitter socks. This is in the colorway French Macaroon. And aren't these colors so perfect? Don't they remind you of a little bakery and all the different beautiful colors of French macaroons? So with these, I did toe up with the fish lips kiss heel and about 12 rounds, I think, of two by two rib. And I absolutely love this pretty pink color that she added for the contrasting heels, toes, and cuffs. I think it really brightened up these socks and these are just gonna be a wonderful addition to my sock drawer, French Macaroon by The Cozy Knitter. Now I've got my yarnable socks from Hypnotic Yarn. This is the colorway Sand Castles. And the pattern I chose to do is called the Times Square Socks. As you can see, it's a really pretty mock cable pattern. You don't actually need a cable needle to do this. It's just across the front of the sock. And the so the back is plain stockinette. She does give you the option to do a toe up or cuff down method and I chose to do toe up. She has a really nice rounded toe and then a German short row heel. The German short row heel she does, if you ever want a good set of instructions for German short row heels, any of Mina Phillips patterns will really be helpful to you. She has some good tips and tricks on how to do those. Here is the pair. And I chose this pattern because the last about 10 years or so, my grandma and my mom and I have been going to New York City to spend some time, see some Broadway shows, go to some museums, and the hotel we stay at is right in Times Square. So I kind of chose those as an homage to all those wonderful trips with everything going on in the world. We aren't going this year. Fingers crossed we can go back next year. But I just thought this was in honor of all those wonderful memories I have spending time in New York in Times Square with my mom and my granny. These are the Times Square socks by Mina Phillip, who is the knitting expat. Highly recommend any of her sock patterns. Last but not least are my heel toe do -si do socks by Kay Litton, who is the crazy sock lady. Here's a shot of what the pattern looks like. This is another one that's just across the front of the sock. A really fun sort of zigzaggy shape. Perfect for self-striping yarn. This is the colorway Lasso from Knit Picks Felici. Here is the pair. I chose this color just because I thought it was kind of fun. I actually did get it 
on sale. Felici, they only put out about twice a year. They have a special set of colorways and then once they're gone, they're gone. So I think I got this for like 30% off when they were trying to clear their inventory, making room for the next next set of Felici. So I think I got these really, really cheap. You do need, Felici comes in 50 gram balls, so you pretty much, unless you're gonna do super, super shorties, you really do need two balls of Felici. But it's one of the cheapest, greatest, all-purpose sock yarns um, for self-striping, you know, that's very reasonably priced. So I really love Knit Picks Felici. This is a really fun, addicting pattern. She has you start at the cuff, a traditional heel flap and gusset, and then a rounded toe. Now I did stop the toe a couple rounds early because I was running out of the orange and I kind of wanted to end it on the orange color before moving into maybe just like one round or two of the white I didn't think would look as nice. So I did stop the toe a little bit early so it would end with the orange, just a little bit of yarn management there, but they, they turned out really nice and they fit perfectly fine. Sometimes with self-striping yarn, you kind of got to do what you got to do to make it work. But these, this is another great addition to my sock drawer. I really, really love this yarn with this pattern. Heel Toe do -si do by Kay Litton, the Crazy Sock Lady. And I highly recommend any of Kay's patterns. Check out the Crazy Sock Lady on Ravelry. And I think she has a shop on Etsy as well. She has lots of really fun sock patterns. <laughs> Now for my works in progress. I'd like to start with a couple shawls that I've been working on. July is my birthday month and so I did treat myself to a couple Christmas in July advents where I got a box of 24 mini skeins and then a full 100 gram skein of yarn for day 25. The first one I'll tell you about is from Laura of Lollipop Girl Yarns on Etsy. She has 24 10 gram mini skeins, and I'm actually using her pattern called the Sugar Pie Honey Bunch Shawl. This is day one through 12. I have not opened or used the mini for today yet. But as you can see, each section is unique with the new colorway and she kind of alternates between some garter ribbing and then some eyelets. And all these colorways are so beautiful. I did go down two needle sizes because I'm a pretty loose knitter. I knew that about myself already, but I originally started going down one needle size. I got gauge, but I finished this first section here and I only had about 17 inches of yarn left. So I thought, eh, I don't really want to chance it. And I went down one more needle size and that's been working out much better so far. I have just enough left that I think I'll probably put all the little bits of extra yarn from this set into a magic knot ball to add to one of my other scrappy projects. All these colors are so pretty. And I think this project will just be a really nice pop of color anytime I wear kind of a dark neutral brown or black top. I think this will add, add a little something special. So I'm looking forward to continuing to add to this. I am using a rainbow chip birthday cake progress keeper from Sucre Sucre Miniatures. My mom makes me a rainbow chip cake every year for my birthday. She has since I was probably about 12 or 13 years old. And I absolutely love it, but it does have to be the Betty Crocker rainbow chip, not the Pillsbury Funfetti. Team Betty Crocker rainbow chip, check in down in the comments because it definitely is way better. And I just thought it was a perfect, perfect progress keeper to use for a birthday project. So this is the Sugar Pie Honey Bunch Shawl by Laura Concert of Lollipop Girl Yarns. 
My other birthday Christmas in July advent that I purchased is from Christy of Yarn Cafe Creations. Her theme was My Little Pony, A Very Minty Christmas. She has 24 20 gram mini skeins and then a full skein on day 25. And here's what I am making with hers. This is called The Land of Sweets Cowl by Helen Stewart. I've only gotten started on day 12. I still haven't opened day 13 yet, but I still have to finish up day 12. And as you can see, each section has its own unique personality in this one as well. There are certain lace patterns, some just plain stockinette, and then some more textured patterns. So this is really coming together nicely, and I think it will add another really nice pop of color for my fall and winter wardrobe. I'm really enjoying this one too. This is The Land of Sweets Cowl by Helen Stewart using Yarn Cafe Creations Christmas in July Advent. And how pretty are all these speckles? She really is getting some incredible colored speckles in all these different yarns. I love it. Really, really love it so much. Land of Sweets Cowl by Helen Stewart. The last shawl I am working on is this Stillness Mystery Knit Along, also by Helen Stewart. And I will cut to a little bit of a video right here through clue two. <laughs> So that was clue two. I have started working on clue three. She has two more clues that she will release the next two weeks, but I didn't want to spoil anything for anybody, so I thought I would just show up through clue two. I have it in this adorable sloth bag from Quilt Knit Craft on Etsy, and I even have a little sloth donut progress keeper as a zipper pull. How cute is he? So I won't show you my current progress since I have started Clue 3, but I will show you my beautiful colorways. I got these as a set from Sharon of Knit Style Yarns. My first color is called Princess. My second color is called Storybook. And my third color is called Villain. And again, this is Knit Style Yarns, Sharon, she's wonderful. I love that she put these three colors together and they really do look very kind of, I, they make me think of like royal, very sophisticated colors. So I'm, I'm enjoying what they're doing in the pattern and can't wait to see how it works up with the next few clues. My first sock whip I'd like to tell you about are my July Desert Vista Dye Work socks. This is the colorway Monopoly, and she absolutely nailed all of these colors. I really think they are perfect. This donut coffee cup charm is from Simply Serving. So I started, I'm doing toe up, two at a time. I am using the rounded toe from Mina Phillips patterns, the last few patterns of hers that I've done because I really like it and it fits nicely. I started with the purple since that's the first color on the board and then I will continue working up until I get to the to the length I like and I'll end try to end with this dark blue which is at the end of the board park place and boardwalk I chose this colorway because my cousins would come visit us every summer and we would spend hours and hours playing Monopoly together and I just have some really fond memories of spending time with them doing that and it makes me happy to think of them. I have just marked for my afterthought heel. I will do an afterthought heel with these and it will go right in the middle of this orange stripe. So I will pick back up with orange from the yarn after I finish knitting the tube and ending the cuff. I think that will look nice. So these are moving right along. I do have to work a little bit more up the leg, but they're so much fun. I really, really love this colorway. 
Like I say, it just makes me happy thinking of all those memories playing with my cousins. Comment down below, what was your Monopoly strategy? I always liked to get all four of the railroads, but I know my cousin, for example, he would always like to get the purples and the light blues and then buy lots of cheap houses and hotels to really try to rake in the rent from all of us. That was his strategy. So comment down below if you have a special strategy that you use when you play Monopoly. One more look at them. This is Monopoly by Desert Vista Dye Works in just a plain vanilla sock with an afterthought heel. Next are my cozy knitter socks for this month. This colorway is called My Friend Margaret, and it's gorgeous. I love this dusty, rosy pink, and then she even does a speckled stripe in this colorway. How pretty is that? Super excited about these. I'm doing two at a time toe up. I did more of a wedge toe on these, and then I will continue up the foot and do a fish lips kiss heel. I'm using this really pretty progress keeper from Charms by Charlie. It's a nice little fruit tart. I love how detailed and beautiful it is. It goes very nicely for a summer project. I think I'm through one full repeat of the stripes. I love her bliss base, this 8020 bliss base. So soft, so cushy, so comfy. The Cozy Knitter in My Friend Margaret from her latest installment of her Yarn of the Month Club. Now I'd like to talk about my latest yarnable socks from Hypnotic Yarn. This colorway is called Boom Fizzle Pop. It's absolutely perfect for July. I love how it's kind of striping with the white and the red and has some nice blue speckles. This cute strawberry cream popsicle progress keeper is from a brand new maker to me that I found on Etsy. This is Stevie and her company is called Sweet Cherry. She had a lot of, I got a couple more progress keepers you'll see in just a second from her. So I'm going to do just a plain cuff down vanilla sock. The pattern I will follow is the Go Your Own Way Socks by Stacy Winkleplek of Knit Picks. And I think I might have to have my mother-in-law try these on. Her birthday is actually the 4th of July, and I think she might really like these, so I might gift them to her. But another very pretty colorway from Hypnotic Yarn in her Yarnable subscription. This is Boom Fizzle Pop. So as if I didn't have enough sock whips on the needles already, I was looking at my stash and kind of got the itch to get a few fall Halloween socks started as well. So I have two pairs on the needles. This first one is a self-striping from Scrumptious Pearl. This Halloween cookie charm is also from Sweet Cherry on Etsy. Scrumptious Pearl is another really nice self-striping dyer. Came with a pretty orange for the contrasting heels, toes, and cuffs. This colorway is called Hocus Pocus. It's very similar to the, it's an 80-20 base, very similar to the Cozy Knitters. And I am pretty much following the same pattern that I like to do for her socks as well. I'm doing sort of a wedge toe up with Judy's Magic cast on, 64 stitch count, and then I'll do a fish lips kiss heel on these two. I think will look nice. Here it is in the cake. And here is her label, Scrumptious Pearl. So that will be fun to have for this fall. My next fall Halloween pair is from Dragon Horde Yarn. And her colorway is called Pumpkin King. And what I am doing with this yarn is the Vanilla Latte Socks by Virginia Rose Johns. This is a cuff down pattern. This cute ghost cookie progress keeper is also from Sweet Cherry. And this is a really nice pattern if you want something beyond just a stockinette, plain vanilla sock. It's got a little bit of detail with some ribbing. I think I did 20 rounds of a two by two rib for the cuff 
and then the pattern starts going down the leg. For the leg, you go all the way around the sock and then you just continue the pattern down the top of the foot once I get down there. There is a heel flap and gusset with this pattern as well. But this will be the second time I've done this pattern and I love the first socks that I made with this. So once again, this is the Vanilla Latte Socks using Dragon Horde Yarns Colorway Pumpkin King. Well, I think that'll about do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching and spending a little bit of time with me. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like and subscribe button. That would really help my channel out and I would be very grateful. I hope you all have a wonderful week ahead. And until next time, be well, be kind, and happy knitting and crocheting. Happy making. We'll see you next time. Bye. Yeah.